Yo, what's good, everyone? Welcome to my first documentary. So, everyone voted for the idea of evolution of NBA offense for this documentary. However, I will only be covering the evolution since the shot clock was implemented in 1957. I'll be breaking this video down to several parts. So, with that being said, let's get started. 1957 to 1970, the era of athletic superiority. So, let's get started with this era, which, as you can guess by the subtitle, focus solely on athletic superiority on offense, where if you were dominant athletically, the game plan was to give, just give you the ball and let you run to the rim in a straight line. But the best examples of this are Will Chamberlain, who's famous for his insane scoring numbers, such as, such as his 50 point per game season, along with another season averaging 45, and a game with 100 points. Another, another example of this type of player is someone that you probably never heard of. His name is Wayfort. Walt Bellamy. This man actually had a season where he averaged 31 and another season where he averaged 35. Now, were the primary and best scorers of this generation were athletic big men. That doesn't mean athletic guards didn't dominate as well. The logo of the NBA, Jerry West, was one of these guards. He had two seasons averaging 31 and another season averaging 29. Another great example of these type of guards is Oscar Robertson who had three seasons with 30 plus points per game. Now, lastly, let's go over to the wings. Some of the best wing scorers were in the 60s. These scorers were Elgin Baylor, who had a season averaging 38 points per game. Granted, his efficiency was hot garbage. And Rick, Rick Barry, who averaged 35 in the season and is famous for his underhand free throws. Still shot 90% from the line though. Now that we've discussed the best scores of this era, let's look into how the game was played. Obviously, there's no three point line and there's no real defensive strategy or gameplay. It was just kind of stop the guy you were guarding and if someone is scoring too much, put more people on him. Remember, there's no three point line so since there was no need to guard a guy so far out, the defense would often just crowd the paint. Now let's look at the most polarizing part of this era. On screen right now, unless I'm a lazy fuck who forgot to put in the graph, you'll be seeing a graph showing how much higher the pace was than it is now, causing inflated scoring numbers. Also, Another thing that caused them playing scoring numbers was the minutes that they played. Obviously, we didn't have the best grasp of med of medicine at that time. So, teams would just play their best players the whole game. Wilt Chamberlain had a season where he averaged more than 48 minutes a game. More than 48! More than an entire game! Because he had a because. A couple of those games went to overtime, and he had to play those overtimes. He only missed five minutes that whole season. So now that we know all that, it's time that we close the book on this error. Okay, guys. So um, this was this is probably going to be the shortest part of the documentary because, yeah, it just is. Um, there's not really much to cover in the sixties and seventies. So, yeah. Um. Tune in to the next turn tune into the next parts.